calendar for our November 26th planning board meeting. Um, the first item will be uh, approval of the minutes, then an ANR on 34 South Road from the South Road Realty Trust. Following that, we'll have the town planner update, old and new business, then adjournment. And we have a quorum present. All members are present for, of the planning board except for Russell Chamberlain. And we also have town planner Jean Bubon and administrative assistant Shanae Lacey present. So with that, uh, do we have, uh, has everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes of um, November 12th? Yes. Great. Any questions, comments, changes? Uh, if not, I'll take a, a motion to approve the minutes. Motion. Chris? Second. Second, Second Sue. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Opposed, nobody? Great. Okay. Uh, Jean, we have the A&R. Do you want to go over yes. that? So you have an A&R before you this evening. And it is for 34 South Road Realty Trust. And you'll see that what this plan is doing is carving off this small parcel, this lot 34A. And that actually was part of this larger parcel of the land of 34 Realty South. Mm -hmm. And it's being conveyed to McDonald. And the plan is appropriately noted. So I would recommend you endorse the plan as submitted. Very good. Any questions, comments? Yeah, I'll take a motion then to uh, approve the A&R. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Okay, I'm going to sign the stuff. I will. Great. What's that? <laughs> right. Uh, we authorize the signing. Maybe there's a better way to have the motion. Just <laughs> authorize the signing, or no? You actually have to vote to approve now. There's new case law on that, okay. so yeah. Approve the fact that the approval isn't required. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. <laughs> very, very thorough over here. <laughs> Well, that's how I was just thinking. There's so many pages that we may not make breaking the record for a five-minute meeting because <laughs> we started about 20 seconds late. So, Plus, I've added a few things to my uh, update okay, that you're well, unaware of right. <laughs> since we met earlier today. Well, the pressure is off then. We'll just let the I did a few more drag things, on. So. <laughs> drag on for nine minutes now. <laughs> Okay, next we'll have the town planner update. All right. So just to update you on our most recent mm. land use division meeting, um, this past Wednesday, staff met with Pilot Travel. And they have been, as you know, they've been talking for some time about tearing down the, the building that used to contain the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And they haven't really gotten that project off the ground. It seems this time they're really ready to move forward. They've engaged um, a consultant to work with them, with their engineering staff that they have on staff and their architects and they propose to tear that building down in the little convenience store mm -hmm. and they'll build a new building that will have um, food services and convenience items for you know people visiting the truck stop as well as people getting gas mm. they will also redo the fueling stations to provide more queuing area off of route 15 we kind of discussed at length the need to get the trucks off of Route right. 15. And we did have representation from the police department there at the meeting as well. And they kind of reiterated that. Mm -hmm. In pilot's defense, they can't police the public ways. So it's kind of, right. you know, and, you know, as Brad 
explained while he was there when they when the truckers run out of hours they need to pull over somewhere right. and now with the new england truck stop closed it's really limiting opportunities so we're hoping that um, with the new design we'll have more room to get the trucks off the road mm -hmm. more fueling stations and a new building Good. it's a shame the old building couldn't be saved but apparently it can't so we'll go through that process with them over the winter months we're expecting and then the housing partnership uh, as you all are aware I'm sure every one of you took your survey so we have the results from the survey and we will be meeting on December 10th at 530 at Town Hall to review the results of the survey uh, when I have the housing partnership packets <coughs> ready I'll also email a copy to each of you it's pretty interesting Great. as suspected people are looking for more opportunities for um, accessory dwelling units and kind of freestanding um, accessory structures on the property to take care of family members or uh -huh. even for a little extra income to help somebody stay in their home so we did see a, a lot of responses for that the December meeting will be the 17th it will be at Town Hall and that will be on the proposed zoning amendments for the special use district and Jeff I'm realizing you weren't on the board when we did those so I'll get you a packet and if you want to come in beforehand we can go over things or email whatever works for you and then just a couple more things that weren't on there so I don't expect that this odd no permit path will continue for very long it's given me an opportunity to work on a lot of planning things which mm -hmm. is great but um, the host community agreements will be going to for the marijuana retailers potential marijuana retailers will be going to the Board of Selectmen on Monday so we're hoping that they will make a decision soon which means that we will be busy with special permit hearings for those uses mm -hmm. um, beyond that in pilot I don't see a lot coming down the road for the winter months so what I've been working on is I've been updating the open space chapter of the master plan because we finished the open space plan so it's a great time for me to work on that chapter with the open space committee I expect to have a draft to you maybe in January or February on that um, Kevin's doing some economic development um, surveys and things and I think we need to take advantage of that data and update the economic development section of the plan so that's probably something else we can work on over the winter months and then the permitted uses in the industrial park in general industrial we had we've gone through a couple of the commercial districts already so I'd like to continue updating those permitted uses as you know a lot of them are out of date so I've been working on that and we'll have that in January and then I've also proposed some language to streamline the permitting process for people that own non-conforming lots or have non-conforming structures on those lots um, consistent with recommendations in the master plan those have been sent to town council he's provided feedback and I need to do some rewrites and then I'll bring those forward to both you and the Zoning Board of Appeals so I think we could work on those January February March if it stays quiet like this we should really take advantage of getting those Great. things done right. and then there was one more thing but I just lost it out of my mind so I guess oh if it comes up before we finish old new business <laughs> right. I'll let you know <laughs> <coughs> Jim any old business not old no okay Jeff nothing no Sue that's it Mike nope. Chris, okay. Good. great new business sounds like you might have something new <laughs> I expect this has been discussed in the past but I don't specifically remember the question of low-income housing the senior citizens community out there is not a trailer park it is a senior citizens community and I'm wondering if it's possible we can get them added to the low-income housing for Sturbridge no so it, it actually would be trying to get it added to the affordable housing count so the subsidized housing inventory is really what I think you're referring to so quite a few years back um, actually back, way back when Charlie was on the housing partnership we had really been making some good strides um, Senator Brewer was a big advocate for counting mobile retirement communities as um, into the subsidized housing inventory it's never really gotten off the ground and we were working with uh, Lee Darazola when we did our last housing plan and we were working with Department of Housing and Community Development and they had actually thought at the time that Sturbridge might be a good kind of pilot project to try to get that advanced because the um, park that we have here is so well maintained and 
a lot of the residents meet the income guidelines as evidenced we were able to get the grant to do the wastewater treatment facility and we did a little bit of renovation of some of the units however that's kind of fallen by the wayside there's been change over at DHCD there no longer seems to be that interest Senator Brewer obviously has retired Senator Gobi and Representative Smola feel the same way Senator Brewer did, but I, it just doesn't seem to want to take flight in the legislature. That's my take on it. That's really what it was. You know, the uh, conversation we had, I think it was the housing commissioner at the time. She was at a meeting in Worcester and we brought it up. And she had indicated there were no strict regulations against it, but there were certain criteria that they needed to develop. And one of them was the fact that it'd be a planned community and have good infrastructure and so forth. Mm -hmm. And it really seemed like uh, the Sturbridge uh, retirement community met that. In fact, you know, Senator Brewer had gotten the legislation to the point where it did get to a vote, and it was it was kind of defeated because there are so many uh, representatives um, from the uh, uh, urban larger urban areas that just didn't want to get that relief to small communities, and it just didn't go anywhere. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's you know in the cards to have it happen, unfortunately. Yeah. But the other impediment is that um, they would have to have an affordable housing restriction on their their home basically to be able to count as subsidized housing inventory you need a restriction on your property so the big issue is how do you restrict it because mobile homes are like titled almost like a vehicle not like yeah, their personal property. property tax not a they do real have estate. A, a maximum income level out there don't they no actually they don't oh okay no who, who owns the land the, it's, it's a cooperative community. so they all own it right, right. okay Okay, well, that's good. Good, good thought. Jeff, anything? Nothing. No. Um, I just have a question, a follow up to what Jim said. Um, I had seen an article about, you know, those tiny houses they're, yes. they're talking about now. I don't know if that was the article you brought forward, but for senior housing or um, single yeah. housing, it would be one way to plan a community, small community. Mm -hmm with its own infrastructure, et cetera, um, and utilize that model because that's really kicking off. I know there was a big write-up in Texas, and um, so I know that's becoming a very popular way for the elderly to, to exist independently mm -hmm. in the backyard of their children or whatever, mm -hmm. like we yeah. talked about Absolutely. accessory properties. But I think it's something we need to think about and get in front of. The, uh, an, on another note, um, I saw a thing on TV about a billboard. You know how there was such problems with having LED blue lights? Mm -hmm. A neighborhood was impacted by a billboard that was up on a highway that would change colors, you know, and... Oh, yeah. Did you see it? LED billboard? Uh, no, but I've seen the billboard. Okay. <clears throat> we don't have any control over the right. highway That's right. but it's something you know just a little something maybe to be put in the um bylaws add to the list mm -hmm. to protect us because i ne had never thought of that are you saying to regulate the not signs. the billboards but the signs so the signs we do have um a section in the bylaw that says that they cannot be internally illuminated and they can only be um, illuminated externally by indirect white light so I think we cover that but we can take certainly take a look at it just to make you sure you never know if there's a way around it right. I don't that's know that's so true <laughs> it's just a thought and when I saw yeah. that it really came you know brought mm -hmm. to my attention because the highways are so close mm -hmm. right good. yeah good no good idea thank you okay. good mic uh, no, no, no. I'm good. Okay. I did have one thing. It actually was old business. I should have brought it up, but I'll give you time to if you, you More time. To see if you remember what you thought of. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, how's the permit software coming along? Is it moving ahead or? Oh, um, <coughs> yeah. <laughs> I see all this gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're getting there. It's been very, very challenging. Um, we are using it. The building department is using it, but not entirely correctly at this mm -hmm. point. So. The payment adapter is still not working, so just when they thought everything was working, it's not working because I've been testing it using my credit card, like make right. fake permits and test it for them. And just when it seemed like it was working, 
we got an error message that we got three months ago. So oh. I was trying to pay a bill for $5. It was charging me $30. Um, so they've got that resolved, but now still the payment won't go through. Wow. The other issue that we have is that we knew the workflow wasn't perfect, and everybody went through the training, and it seemed that people understood how to use it. But you know how that is. You go to training, and then you right. really sit down to use it, and it's more confusing than you thought it would be. Mm -hmm. So Janae actually kudos to her because she's pretty tech savvy and she's redoing some of the workflows for we're starting with building department because they need to use it the most right. and after probably between thanksgiving and christmas we're going to have our own little internal training again to at least try to get planning building and conservation using it the way that we need to be using it and then bring in we have a new admin at dpw so she's never had any training so mm -hmm. then we'll need to work with her so we're optimistic that maybe by february or march we might be up to where we had hoped we'd be already oh. two years ago okay. but it's been a struggle oh, i, I know it's been haven't ongoing. paid the final payment um is there any more program support for training no we've we've exhausted we've the exhausted the training so our training will be really Janae kind of leading people through she's using it for she's using it for all of our permits so you know we know it works we're using it uh, we just have to get people comfortable with the workflow so it, what it's supposed to do is you're supposed to take like a site plan application enter it in and then through the workflow it should go to the tax collector to sign mm -hmm. off the taxes are paid and then it should go out say you need dpw conservation health and building to look at it it should automatically go out to all of them they get mm -hmm. a notification on their desktop they review the application they comment right within the application mm -hmm. so instead of getting all these separate memorandums right and then we get the information back and then I can compile the final report to provide to you. What's happening is I think people are getting tripped up when they try to kind of disperse it to the other departments. So they're okay with putting the permit in and creating the permit at the end, but not with getting it out to folks in that manner, so. Is that something that just needs training or is it a training in a little, app of the program? Um, you know the the program is complex yes. we knew it wasn't going to be perfect and you know we have a very detailed workflow so I think maybe some towns don't have as much of a de detailed workflow but here we send it out to everybody we want everybody to be in the loop and so I think that's part of the issue right. I think if it we're just building inspector putting in their permits and issuing the permits absolutely fine but because we want kind of all hands right. on deck with reviewing it's a little more complex yeah. than what we need to do has other communities did did i don't know who was responsible for choosing the program it was, was basically that looked at as far as that it type was of it was so um you'll I remember guess. we had gotms and they were actually yeah. bought out by Asella. so we did through an rfp process um, entertained other programs this was our most economical way to go because we were already using geo so they gave us a much better price if we stayed with the acela i think it's a very good program i think it's a very robust program that can do a lot i think that um you know i was here when we implemented geo and it honestly it was just as painful it's very <laughs> so painful. New programs it was are just very as painful, painful. it was i just didn't know what it's really hard to get people everybody using it yeah. yeah yeah it is so We'll Good. get Thanks there. Thanks for the update. Good. Well, Faith. thank you. Yeah, You're thanks welcome. very much. Okay. Anything else then? A motion to adjourn if we're all set? Let's so move. Okay. <laughs> second. Second. All in favor? Great. Have a nice Thanksgiving. Thank you. you. Too.